I... This call is now being recorded. Okay, chat, yeah. Okay, kita balik kepada video, ya. Yeah? So, just now you have already, in part B, you have already prepared your solution and NOH inside the bureau. So, now we want to use pipet. Okay, so dalam video ini, kalau awak nampak, eh, Okay, we can see a pipet. Ah, dekat sini nampak dia punya perut kan. This pipet itself contains 25 milliliter. So that means if you want to use 25 milliliter of solution, this is the apparatus that you're going to use. Okay, and then the one in red color over here is your um, pump. Ah, pipet filler or we call the pipet pump. Okay, it's actually the functions is to suck up the fun, uh, the solution from the beaker here. Uh, so, kalau dekat sini awak nampak, solution daripada part A, kita punya oxalic acid solution. Okay, kita akan keluarkan dalam satu beaker kosong. Okay, lepas tu akan guna pipet untuk ambil solution tersebut. Jangan terus guna pipet masuk dalam uh, volumetry flask terus. You have to take out first to avoid uh contamination okay so now if we want to use the pipette so of course similar like burette we rinse it first uh, maksud rinse adalah cuci kita cuci pakai solution yang kita nak guna so in this case we want to use the oxalic acid solution so we rinse it first before we fill up okay so contoh Teknik pun tak boleh nak bagi awak experience lah. Mungkin dalam second semester you can try it good. Okay. So this is also the way of we rinsing it. You swirl it. Make sure every part in this uh, pipette is uh, touching with your, it's like touch and go lah with the um, oxalic acid. Okay. And then after that, you just throw it away. So we just use a tiny little bit to rinsing. Okay. And then after that, after rinsing, we will take 25 milliliter of oxalic acid, okay? And then we will transfer it into the conical flask. So dalam video ini, kalau awak nampak, kita ada beberapa apparatus, eh? Make sure you know every names of this apparatus, okay? So this is our volumetry flask. This is a beaker, okay? This is a pipette. And then we have the conical flask. Okay, conical flask dalam 250 milliliter juga. Tapi kita guna 20 milliliter solution sahaja. Okay. Uh, any question for the names of apparatus in this case? And this no, one I don't. Yeah. So after that, we transfer. For this one, your pipet also we need to look at the calibrated mark. So yang ini lagi obvious sikit lah, dia brown color. Okay, so make sure your solution touch this calibrated mark before you transferring. Okay, so once it's achieved the calibrated mark, then we transfer it. Make sure all the solutions flow inside your conical flask. And then we are ready for the titration. And remember to add two drops of phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is actually your indicator. Nah, maksud indicator kita nak nampak warna. So kita letak phenolphthalein. So nanti bila dia sudah capat dia, uh, it become a, a basic, it will turn pink color. So in acidic, it is colorless. Okay. And then when it turns into basic, then it will change color. So that is the functions of the indicator. So... This is the method for you to do titration. On top of here is your burette. We fill with NaOH. The bottom one is the oxalic acid. Okay. And then we are going to titrate it. So open the tap bit by bit and let the solutions flow inside your conical flask. Okay. And then while doing that, you need to swirl at the same time. So part ini, 
7 and the step 7 reach the unreacted solutions in the inner wall of conical flask with distilled water so cara ini walaupun kita tambah distilled water dia tak akan effect okay awak punya experiment tak akan effect result okay you need to remember this because distilled water when you when you adding inside the solutions over here it does not affect the number of mole okay it does not affect the number of mole so doesn't matter if you add the distilled water over here dia tak akan uh, just dia punya result uh, madam so basically speaking when we add uh, distilled water it will uh -huh. change molarity but it won't change mo the it mo it's small it's yes oh, okay. dia akan kurangkan concentration sebab dia tambah volume kan uh, kurang concentration tambah volume tapi number of mole yang penting ialah number of mole dia kekal uh, ingat dalam stoichiometry kita fokus kepada number of mole so you need to make sure you understand adding this to water it will keep your number of mole constant okay and then we continue until you see a pale pink color uh, when you get a really pale pink that means your result is very very good so normally even half a drop will give you the pale pink color so after that you need to check the reading from your burette okay check the reading where is the line where is your calibrated mark and then you record down in do two decimal places as well and then find the volume used so you need to repeat uh, another three more times until you get four conical flasks with all pale pink color so this result okay you're going to use it in your lab report writing okay and 27.60 all of this later on transfer into your lab report okay that is for part b so any questions for part b Uh, I don't think so as for now. Okay. No. Yang lain? That, yep. Okay. So we proceed to part C. If you look at the title of part C, determinations of the molar concentrations of HCl solution. So just now part one, we at uh, part A, we did we provide, we prepared the oxalic acid standard solution. Part B, we standardize the NaOH solution. So these two Part, part A and part B is actually to prepare for us to do part C. So from the NaOH solution, okay, we can know the concentrations of our HCl. And the step is actually more or less the same like our part B. Okay, the only difference is part B just now we take the solutions from the volumetry flask. But now part C, we take the solutions from HCl. Okay, so uh, you see, Madam, yeah. So basically speaking, uh, we just change the acid, isn't it? Yes. But we use the same. Oh, all right. Yes, use the same. Uh, use the same NaOH solution, but different acid. Part B oxalic acid from part A, and then part C is using HCl. Uh, so the first one is the weak acid. Second one is strong acid. Uh, you right? don't have to know about this one yet. Now you just focus on different type of acid. All right, noted. Okay, good. So rinse the paper with HCl solution. So just now, uh, Madam told you rinsing, you need to rinse with the solutions you are going to use. So after rinsing, again, fill the pipette with 25 milliliters of HCl. And then again, put it into inside the 250 milliliter conical flask. So in this process, the solution is sucking up using the pipette filter. Okay, and then until this calibrated marks, and then you're transferring the solutions inside the conical flask. So remember to do the laboring lah so that you are clear during your doing the experiment. And then phenolphthalein for the color changes indicator. And then the titration, keep on swirling until you get your final result, the pale pink solutions. This is a very good set of results. And then record the reading. 
So that means if you're you, you, if you're doing um in the lab, right? This experiment will take up to two hours because you keep on repeating um the titrations for up to eight times. Not lapan kali uh kena buat titration. So experiment ini memang dia agak lama sikit lah. Okay. So let's just look at the experiment part. So now it's eleven twenty seven. Okay. So dekat sini, Madam nak uh, mention a little bit for the video. So over here, you can see. I'm doing some drawings over here. You can see the oxalic acid inside our beaker. This one doesn't matter lah. This one is the solid oxalic acid, about 3.0005 gram. So after that, you make a 250 milliliter solution inside the volumetric flask. And then we only take 25 milliliter inside the conical flask. So dekat sini, kena make sure awak faham dan tahu apparatus punya nama dengan volume dia berapa. Okay, ini daripada part A ya. Ah, So 25, uh, 250 milliliter volume, volumetry flask dan 20 milliliter adalah dalam conical flask. Ini sahaja yang kita akan pakai dalam titration. Okay, we'll use this one in your titration. So when we say about calibrated mark, dalam practical test, Madam rasa kemungkinan besar dia akan test. Okay, so contoh Madam bagi dalam sini. Let's say this is your calibrated marks inside the volumetry flask ataupun dalam pipet. Okay, you need to make sure you are taking the reading or you are taking the something like this. Can you see uh, this line? Ha, dalam sini, kalau air warna dekat biru sini, eh, kita tengok meniscus level is on top of this one. The concave shape, uh, concave shape ha, dekat sini. Kan nampak? So, kita ambil dekat sini, level dia. Okay, ini yang betul punya. Kalau dekat sini, awak kalau calibrated maka dekat sini, awak ambil macam ini, maka salah ya sebab kita ambil yang dekat concave, uh, concave shape over here. So this level is actually wrong if you're doing this way. So make sure kalau nak ambil reading ke, nak tengok calibrated marks, make sure awak punya eye level, okay, ataupun awak check uh, dia punya menis meniscus dekat level sini. Nah, concave atas line yang dia, dia punya apparatus. You get me? Yes, madam. Yes. Okay, madam bagi satu contoh lagi. Let's say sekarang dekat sini madam bagi satu uh, reading dalam conical flask. Let's say this one is 0 0.00 in your view rate. Okay, inside your view rate. Then over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 0.50. And then this one will be 1.00. So let's say if I stop your initial reading, let's say over this uh, part. So what is the values that you will take? Pardon? Oh, okay. What is the values of this initial view rate reading? Nampak tak? 0.4. So, but dalam exam dia akan test eh? Is it 0.30 or 0.40? Which one do you think? Uh, 0.4. So, we will take this one. 0 0.40 rather than the 0 0.3. So, take the values which is on the bottom here. Okay, so you need to practice lah. Kalau dekat rumah ada macam uh, measuring cups or whatever, you can use that to practice this one. Okay, so make sure you take the bottom values over here. And then after that, ah, yang ini tadi Madam sudah terangkan eh, part A, kita sediakan oxalic acid. Part B, kita standardizekan NaOH and then part C, determine concentrations of HCl. 
Okay, oxalic acid is our primary standard solution. Okay, primary standard solution. And then NaOH is our secondary standard solution. So in the lab report also, Madam asked for the meaning of standard solution. Now, can uh, I Primary standard solutions to know the, uh, the, the concentration of NaOH. Secondary standard solution is to know the solutions of, uh, to know the concentrations of another solution. Uh, so dia macam nak check concentration untuk solution yang lain. Okay. Lepas tu dalam diagram ini, okay, what do you call this apparatus? Uh, burate. Burate. And then what do you call the one at the bottom? Conical flask. Conical flask. Okay, conical flask. So make sure you understand inside burate, we call it as titran. Okay, inside the conical flask, we call it as the analyte. So in this case, let's say we do our part B, inside the burate is our NaOH. Okay, inside the conical flask is the oxalic acid. Okay, for part C, inside the, uh, inside the burate is our NaOH, still the same, but we change the acid in the conical flask. Okay, so this is what extract from the video. You need to understand lah, what is filled inside burate, what is filled inside conical flask. So let's come to the lab report server here. Okay, so again, the same lah, the dates of experiment. Uh, dates of experiment, you put it today. Okay, uh, 9th of, sorry, 2nd of September. So the title of experiment, experiment two, what is the learning outcome, your name and the metric number. Don't forget the sign and the date for today. Okay, so this is the format that you are going to use also for your practical test. So the title, jangan lupa, ada beberapa orang yang lupa nak masukkan title dalam experiment satu lab report, yeah? So don't forget about this part. Normally, in your practical test also, it will give you one mark for the title. Salin saja dapat satu marka. Okay, learning outcome, you can get it from the lab manual and that's four learning outcome all together. Okay, so this one take from the lab manual. Okay, the introduction part can also uh, refer to the lab manual introduction or um, the theory part. So have you filled this one yet? So, uh, jawapan semua boleh dapat daripada introduction lab manual. Uh, so, in this case, you, you try to fill in the blank. Lah. Labor, uh, titration is a laboratory, laboratory technique used to determine the concentration, blah, blah, blah. So, answer can be get, getting from the lab manual. And this one, define the standard solution. Mana nak awak check daripada internet. Uh, because for the lab manual, it gives you separate primary and secondary standard solution. Okay, I only want to know what is the definition for standard solutions only. That not primary, that not secondary. Saya not overall. Okay, tell me about the standard solutions meaning. Is everyone all right? All right. Yes, madam. Okay. So, yang ini lain awak fill in the blank lah. NaOH solution need to be standardized because it contain impurity. Uh, solid NaOH is hygroscopic because it's absorbed moisture. Uh, so, semua jawapan boleh dapat daripada introduction. Equivalence point, uh, when your reactants completely reacting according to stoichiometry ratio. And point is when your indicator change color. And then molarity of solution is defined as number of mole of solute in one liter solution. So given the formula in this. And then based on stoichiometry, molarity of other solutions can be determined. Okay, so semua jawapan dekat sini, uh, check sendiri uh, dalam lab manual. Sebab salin saja. Uh, uh, other than the definition standard solution, maybe not uh, what check separate. Guna definition dalam internet. Okay, so on top part introduction, any questions? Ada soalan tak dekat part introduction? No, madam. 
No. no okay. Then come into the data. Okay, for this part, you will see uh, and fill, you will need to fill in the blank. Mass of the um, mass of hydrated oxalic acid. Okay, the words hydrated that means this oxalic acid carry the H uh, two O. So dalam uh, lab manual, it given you the formula is H two C two O four dot two H two O. That means inside the oxalic acid. Okay, it's carried together two molecule of water. So, bila awak nak carikan molar mass, kita tambah semua sekali. Okay, maksudnya dua darab satu tambah dua darab dua belas tambah empat darab enam belas tambah lagi dua darab lapan belas. Okay, dot ini bukan maksud matematik, bukan darab eh, dia tambah. So, you need to add all of this inside your molecular mass. In order to find your mole of hydrated oxalic acid. So make sure you calculate according to the hydrated oxalic acid. Boleh faham? Boleh, madam. Okay. So after you got the mole of uh, oxalic acid, we need to calculate the molarity of your hydrated oxalic acid. Okay. Macam mana nak dapatkan molarity? Kalau kita sudah dapat mol. Any idea? Mol over volume. Yes. Uh, the volume is the 250 or the original 30? Where got original 30? Oh, the pre... Oh, of the last result, isn't it? The 250 milliliter. The, the 30 is approximately. That one is also only help you to dissolve the sodic oxalic acid. Tapi kita prepare berapa banyak? Dalam volumetry class, kita prepare berapa banyak? Uh, 250. 250. So remember just now, dissolve inside the... Because already, right? You transfer into volumetry flask. So, dekat sini, part yang ketiga ini, kita selepas dapat number of mole hydrated oxalic acid, we need to divide by the volume of the solutions you prepare. So, in this case, okay, number of mole daripada jawapan sini, eh, kita kena divide by 0 0.25 liter. Okay, 0 0.250 because we are preparing 250 milliliter which is equivalent to 0 0.25 liter. Okay, so yang ini, mana dah bagi uh, guideline awak cari sendiri. Okay, so we come into part B over here. Standardizations of 0 0.2 molar NaOH solution. 0 0.2 molar, ya yeah, betul, dia bagi. Tapi kita kena check sama ada daripada proses titration ini, betul ataupun tidak kita punya molarity NaOH ialah 0.2. Okay, is it slightly less than that or slightly more than that? Okay, this is the concept of standardization. So we need to do four sets all together. In this case, gross maksudnya checking, try and error. So kemungkinan dekat gross ini, mungkin for, uh, for, for beginner, you won't be able to get exactly pale pink. You will get an intense pink ataupun pink color macam ini. Okay, pink color macam ni bukan apa yang kita nak. Kita nak, nak yang paling-paling pale, almost colorless. That is the precise decision, a uh, precise result. Okay, tapi kalau dekat gross, biasanya student akan dapat result macam ni. So, itu bukan yang kita nak. Uh, so, untuk gross ini, kita just try and error. See how many volume actually we want to use. Okay, so for this case, just now from the uh, videos, right, it record the initial reading as 1.90. Okay, and then after you transfer the solution and get the pale pink solution, okay, you will 
uh, get your final reading. So 27.60. So you need to find the differences. Okay, tengok berapa banyak yang kita pakai untuk volume and AOH. So you calculate over here and you get 25.70. Remember everything inside the um, table, two decimal point. Okay, yang ini sangat serious eh. Kalau let's say awak rasa, Madam, macam kosong tak guna sangat saya buat 25.3. Contoh eh, sini ada berapa kolom, berapa kotak, satu kotak tolak satu markah. Okay, I tell you this one is a very serious mistake. So make sure every reading inside the buried reading here, you put two decimal point. Okay, kalau tak satu salah, tolak satu maka. Dekat sini ada dua belas kotak. Kalau semua awak letak satu decimal ataupun whole number, bukan dua decimal point, maka tolak dua belas maka. Okay? Uh, Madam. Ya. Yeah. So basically, gross is try and error. Uh, Hazi, belum, Madam, belum habis explain lagi kejap, ya. Yeah? Oh. Okay. Gross is try and error. For you to see, okay, now I assume I'm going to use 25.70 volume and AOH. So I'm going to prepare in my set 1, set 2, and set 3. Okay. So gross value is to help you to assume ataupun prepare berapa banyak yang saya kena sediakan dalam saya binyam bureau. Okay, it's like a guideline. Actually, how many I need to use. Uh, of course, this set is done by lecturers, so the, the value is more or less the same. Okay, because we have already done a, a few times already. Okay, so uh, you need to make sure this gross value, we are not calculating for the average. So nanti bila awak repeat, Set 1, repeat set 2, repeat set 3. Kita akan pakai ketiga-tiga volume ini daripada set 1, set 2, set 3 to find the average volume. Okay, so set 1, set 2, set 3, why we are repeating 3 times is to increase the accuracy. Okay, again, uh, doing titration for 3 times is to increase the accuracy of the experiment. So, lagi banyak set awak pakai, sebenarnya lagi uh, betul lah awak punya result. Lagi tepat awak punya result. Okay. So, once uh, this one I leave to you to jot down now what is the final reading and the initial reading. And after you have get back the re reading survey here, everyone should have the same reading lah because you get the same result from the video. Okay. Then you calculate the average volume of NaOH used. So, this one you use set 1. Set 2 plus set 3, divide by 3. Then this one will be your average volume of NaOH. Is everyone clear? Yes, madam. Okay. Jangan masukkan gross value dekat sini lah. Ha, masuk set 1, 2, 3 sahaja. Okay. Untuk part C pun sama juga. Ha, so every reading inside the table, we're using two decimal point. Then the result is getting from the video as well. And the average volume still the same using 1, 2, 3, divide by 3. And get your average volume here. All right. So any question for the result recording here? And this one, the get part result data. Uh, there's no questions as for now. Yes, Hana. Hana want to ask questions? No, no. That is all, Anya. Okay. So, lepas tu, Madam nak tengok awak punya calculation. So, for calculation part, Madam will uh, guide you how to do it. Okay. Maybe some of you will get the lab report from other class. It will look slightly different. Ah. Kalau ada yang ambil contoh daripada kelas lain, jangan salin buta-buta saja. Mereka tahu you ada uh, communicate with other class. Tapi jawapan mungkin pensyarah lain akan bagi. Ha, tapi untuk format dia ada lain sikit untuk lab report, Madam. And I already give you some guideline inside the calculations part over here. So if you look at the part A, preparations of standard oxalic acid solution, we need to find a mole. So just now in the table you have already calculated, which is using the mass divided by the molar mass of hydrated oxalic acid. 
Ingat eh, guna H2C2O4 dot. Tambah lagi dengan dua molekul H2O. Okay, so the total volume of oxalic solution prepared is 250 milliliter, change it to liter, and then the molarity exactly like just now. Uh, so in this part, you can show your calculations over here. And then for part B, standardization of 0.2 molar NaOH solution, balance the following equation. So yang ini, kita hanya guna oxalic acid saja, H2C2O4 only. Then you balance the rest of it. Ya, yang ini belum balance lagi lah, awak kena balance sendiri. Okay, so after this, we are going to use this balance equation to do the stoichiometry calculation. Okay, contoh dekat sini, mole of H2C2O4. This is in part B, calculation. So, Madam nak tanya berapa banyak oxalic acid kita guna dalam part B? Anyone? One mole, eh, one mole equal volume. to... Volume. How many volume of oxalic acid we use in part B? The one in conical flux? Anyone remember? Tak ada orang yang ingat. Dalam conical flux berapa yang guna? 25. 25. Well done. Okay. Dekat atas part A sini, ini yang kita sediakan. Kita sediakan memang banyak. Ha, dalam volumetry flux memang banyak. 250. Tapi apa yang kita guna dalam conical flux, yang kita buat titration, hanya 25 ml saja. Okay. So for this case, you can jot down over here 25 ml in the conical flux. Ha. Yang ini kita repeat empat kali. Kita ada gross, kita ada set 1, kita ada set 2, kita ada set 3. Okay. So moles equals to molarity times with the volume. So molarity yang awak dapat daripada part A. Ha. So dekat sini Madden catat eh. Okay. Molarity from part A. Then the volume, you can straight away change it to liter lah which is 0 0.025 liter. It's the same lah, 25 milliliter or 0 0.025 liter. So after you're getting this number of mol, then you're going to fill in here. So let's say Madam bagi jawapan dulu lah. Cara untuk pengiraan awak cek sendiri. Okay, Madam bagi jawapan. 0.00238 mol. Ini ini mol untuk oxalic acid part B. Okay, so according to the balance equation, then you fill in the blank. So see, what is the mole ratio? What is the stoichiometry? One mole of oxalic acid react with how many mole of NaOH? Now, yeah, this one according to the balance equation. So when you have 0 0.003, sorry, 238 mole of oxalic acid, so you need to calculate the number of mole of the sodium hydroxide. And then after that, Guideline also given to know or to confirm, okay, your molarity of NaOH using the number of mole over here, okay, divide by the average volume of NaOH used inside part B. So, tadi dekat part uh, data analysis, awak ada kira kan uh, average value. So, guna yang dekat sini. Okay, using this one. to do the calculations for the molarity of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so guideline eh, mole of NaOH ini dapat dari sini, kita terus transfer, divide by average volume NaOH used from your part B. Yang awak cari 1 tambah 2 tambah 3 divide by 3, that one. Okay, and then for part C, it involved the reactions between sodium hydroxide and also the HCl solution. So you need to write the balance equation between NaOH and also HCl. Okay, and then calculate the mole of NaOH. Dekat sini, Madam pun letak guideline ikut sahaja. 
Okay, molarity of NaOH from part B, which is this one. So, awak memang kena ikut, eh, sudah buat part A, baru buat part B. Part B sudah siap, baru boleh buat part C. So, molarity of NaOH part B, which is this one, after you have calculated the, 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 the one on the top. Okay, dapat dari sini kan, kita transfer kepada molarity of NaOH part B. And then you need to times with the average volume of NaOH used in part C. Okay, ini cara nak dapat mole of NaOH. Dia nampak complicated lah, eh? tapi awak kena ikut step by step. So after you have done for the mole of NaOH, then we do again the stoichiometry. But this time is for part C. According to the balance equation, one mole of NaOH react with one mole of HCl. So this one is standardized. Lah. Okay. And then how many mole okay, of NaOH react with how many mole of HCl? So dekat sini, ini yang kita nak cari. Ah. So once you got the mole of HCl from stoichiometry, then we will calculate the molarity of HCl. So volume HCl inside conical flask which is equals to 25 milliliter or 0 0.025 liter. Ah, so dekat sini sampai sini sajalah sebenarnya ini adalah kita punya target. Ah, kita punya target nak dapat molarity tapi dia kena melalui oxalic acid, kena melalui NaOH standard solution baru akan dapat molarity HCl. Biasanya guna uh, tutorial question nampak macam senang kan. Experiment is the other way around. Dia akan ikut one by one, step by step. Okay. So dekat sini sampai part calculations. Um, do you have any questions? Nampak complicated kan? Tidak. Nak tanya? Ya. Yeah. Yang dia cari molarity of NaOH2. Mm -hmm. Yang kan ada ruang kosong kat atas tu kan ni uh, berapa banyak mol of NaOH2 kan? Mm -hmm. Maksudnya kena kira dekat bawah tu dulu baru isi nilai tu. Ya yeah, betul. Kena, kena ruang kosong ini untuk awak buat pengiraan. Ha, maksudnya awak kena cari dulu. Cari dulu bol NaOH nanti baru awak isi dekat tempat kosong. Yang ya, ya, molarity, molarity. Oh, yang molarity dekat sini eh? Haa. Uh -uh. ah, awak kena cari dulu. So, once you dapat molarity daripada part, part B ni, nanti awak akan guna dekat sini. Nampak tak? Tempat metal highlight eh? So, for this part, okay, after you find this molarity, you are going to use it in this part. Okay. Okay, I'll do the So, are there other questions? No, madam. Okay. If no questions, then we proceed for discussion. Uh, for discussion, you're just answering the questions only. How to increase the accuracy of titration value? So just now Madam mentioned um, by repeating the experiment by several times, by three times, okay? And then during titration, it is unnecessary to know the exact concentrations of oxalic acid, okay? So answer why we don't have to know is that it has something to do with number of mole, okay? And then number three, the additions of water into conical flask during titration will not affect the result because, okay, it also has something to do with number of mole. And the reactions between acid and base depends only on stoichiometry. Okay, so for discussion part, you can uh, write your own sentence lah. Ada soalan? Uh, no, madam. I don't think we have any other questions. Yang lain ada soalan sampai discussion? Tak ada. No, madam. Tak ada, madam. Okay. 
kalau tak ada soalan, last part dekat sini adalah conclusion. So, conclusion pun isi dalam tempat kosong saja. Morality of standard oxalic acid solution is, what is your answer in part A? Okay, morality of NaOH is, what is your morality NaOH in part B? Then for number three, molarity of HCl solution is, what is your molarity in part C? Uh, so result dari pada part A, part B, part C. So that will be your conclusion. Madam, file lab report ni nak ambil kat mana eh? Saya cari kat OAC tak jumpa pun. Template ni ni eh? Haa. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, dekat ini. my link. Ah uh, dekat my link ada. Ah uh, jap saya cari, saya share dekat dalam Telegram lah jap. Dalam my link ada. Rasanya my link ah uh, tengoklah kalau you nak words dalam format words rasanya madam pun upload yang words juga. Uh, so those who want to edit through laptop you can use that or if you want to print out and write it you can use also. Okay, so don't worry, our practical test on week 11, by that time, we, we should have a short briefing again for experiment 2. Okay, so Madam akan remind lagi kalau untuk practical test, apa yang awak kena perhatikan. So you try to complete the red report first. So before our practical test, later on, Madam will brief you again uh, for the content and also how to, what to look, what to be careful to in doing your lab report. Okay. So, lepas ini, Madam bagi masa satu jam untuk awak buat practical test. Eh, practical test pula. Topical test. Chapter 2. Madam bagi masa sampai pukul satu setengah, okey tak? Okey. Okay. Hmm. It's actually one hour, 17 questions only. Okay, but the total mark is 20. Uh, you can rest a bit first and then begin uh, your test right away you, or you want to begin 12.15. Tapi sampai masa satu jam setengah sahaja ya. Rujuk nota boleh rujuk dia punya, let's say, Robert Constant atau ingat. Yang tu boleh rujuk lah. Tapi yang lain cuba, cuba tengok berapa banyak awak dapat. The question is not very difficult. Most of the questions we have already discussed in tutorial. So any questions before Madam send the link? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, lain. Madam tengah send lagi jap, ya. Do you re receive the links? Are the links that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Kalau ada, uh, you check your own time. Either you want to start now, but I will stop and collect the result before on at one thirty. Ah, uh, so result yang lepas one thirty, madam tak accept dah ya. Sebab hari itu topical test ada yang lewat sampai satu empat puluh lima baru hantar. Ah, uh, so sebelum Satu setengah hantar eh semua. Alright, so that's it and Madam Anchor first. Okay, you all can leave already. Right, thank you class. Thank, thank you, Madam. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam.